continuation of my read aloud series of the Indian Economic Development textbook for class 11. I am now with chapter 6 that is Rural Development, Unit 3 Challenges Faced by the Indian Economy. So now I'm going to read Credit and Marketing in Rural Areas. Credit. Growth of rural economy depends primarily on infusion of capital from time to time to realize higher productivity in agriculture and non-agricultural sector. As the time gestation between crop sowing and realization of income after production is quite long, farmers borrow from various sources to meet their initial investment on seeds, fertilizers, implements and other family expenses of marriage, death, religious ceremonies, etc. At the time of independence, money lenders and traders exploited small and marginal farmers and landless laborers by lending to them on high interest rates and by manipulating the accounts to keep them in a debt trap. A major change occurred after 1969 when India adopted social banking and multi-agency approach to adequately meet the needs of rural credit. Later, the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, that is NABAD, was set up in 1982 as an apex body to coordinate the activities of all institutions involved in the rural financing system. The Green Revolution was a harbinger of major changes in the credit system as it led to the diversification of the portfolio of rural credit towards production-oriented lending. The institutional structure of rural banking today consists of a set of multi-agency institutions, namely commercial banks, regional rural banks, RRBs, cooperatives, and land development banks. They are expected to dispense adequate credit at cheaper rates. Recently, self-help groups, henceforth SHGs, have emerged to fill the gap in the formal credit system because the formal credit delivery mechanism has not only proven inadequate, but has also not been fully integrated into the overall rural, social and community development. Since some kind of collateral is required, vast proportion of poor rural households were automatically out of the credit network. The SHGs promote thrift in small proportions by a minimum contribution from each member. From the pooled money, credit is given to the needy members to be repayable in small installments at reasonable interest rates. By March end 2003, more than 7 lakh self-help groups had reportedly been credit linked. Such credit provisions are generally referred to as microcredit programs. Self-help groups have helped in the empowerment of women. It is alleged that the borrowings are mainly confined to consumption purposes. Why are borrowers not spending for productive purposes? Well, that's a question that you should think about. Rural banking, a critical appraisal. Rapid expansion of banking system had a positive effect on the rural farm and non-farm output income and employment, especially after the Green Revolution. It helped farmers to avail services and credit facilities and a variety of loans for meeting their production needs. Famines became events of the past. We have now achieved food security, which is reflected in the abundant buffer stocks of grains. However, all is not well with our banking system. With the possible exception of the commercial banks, other formal institutions have failed to develop a culture of deposit mobilization, lending to worthwhile borrowers and effective loan recovery. Agriculture loan default rates have been chronically high. Why farmers fail to pay back loans? 
it is alleged that farmers are deliberately refusing to pay back loans what could be the reasons so so many things to think about thus the expansion and promotion of the rural banking sector has taken a back seat after reforms to improve the situation it is suggested that banks need to change their approach from just being lenders to building up relationship banking with the borrowers inculcating the habit of thrift and efficient utilization of financial resources needs to be enhanced among the farmers too